This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by BikeAllTheWay.com News about the Ward Bird situation often comes out so fast and furious, it's hard to even list it all. But I'll try to tell you what I can. Bird, as you may know, is a New Hampshire resident given a three- to six-year prison sentence for defending his home with a firearm. No one was harmed in the trespassing incident. A new state rep-elect, William Panic, maybe I should say Panic, has joined state rep Betsy Patton in actively supporting Ward. He says he's just submitted a bill that would change the law so homeowners have the right to brandish a firearm on their own property. Of course, if Panic was at the State House on November 22nd, he didn't have any trouble getting a good look at the movement he's supporting. At least a hundred people showed up at the State House to call for Byrd's release. This outcry comes just a month after a group of similar size achieved successes against the state's Child Protective Services. In October, authorities snatched baby Cheyenne Irish from her parents within 16 hours of birth. One of the reasons they listed for doing so was his affiliation with a group of pro-Second Amendment law enforcers. The group is called Oath Keepers. It rose up in New Hampshire. And within a week, the couple had their baby back. Now there is almost an assumption in the air that these folks will get their way too, at least up to a point. The main danger, as I sense it now, is that authorities will figure out some way to sort of weasel out of the problem while still inflicting a lot of harm on Ward Bird. Authorities can ruin your life without giving you a single day in prison. The real challenge for these folks may come after the authorities have made one or two concessions that take some wind out of the movement's sails. Again, if you look at the Irish case, authorities only really made two concessions. One was returning the baby for now. The other was a vague admission they shouldn't be focusing on political affiliations. Those, at least, are the results last I checked. Again, last I checked, both Jonathan Irish and his fiancée Stephanie remain under a gag order and, to some extent, under the thumb of the state's child protective bureaucracy. As best I can tell, Oath Keepers never received an apology or a retraction from DCYF, the Child Protective Bureaucracy. Another danger is that the authorities will release Byrd just to take off the heat while continuing the abusive sentences of hundreds of other New Hampshireites. Take nurse Patricia Smith, for instance a New Hampshireite sentenced to over two years in prison for harmlessly growing marijuana. I think a better term for that might be helpfully growing marijuana. I'm a nurse. I worked to Marion all my life. And uh, I currently have a job. Hospice person. Oh no, never heard me. I'm a Have a seat. Have a seat. Ian Freeman of Keene got a 93-day sentence for sitting down too slow in court. It's America's freest state, but there are an endless number of sentencing abuses here, too. My hope is that this protest will have legs and maintain its viability as a movement, even after Ward Bird is released. Here, my buddy, he's uh, leaving me. Do you remember the gay Arab anarchist? Uh, yes. Well, even if you're just pretending to remember him, he remembers you, or maybe he doesn't. But in any case, he's doing something for you. He's biking across America for liberty. Wow. If he's doing that for you, surely you can do something for him. Visit his website, bikeallaway.com. He'll be uploading a lot of videos from New Hampshire to Florida and Florida to California, or something like that. BikeAllTheWay.com